it took over. People don't even have to be in the room. They could be on the parking lot and they can't the even crawl to get into the service. They're out under the power because the fear and the presence of the Lord, the conviction, the delivering power, every demon's got to be driven out. And it's an effortless victory at that point. Oh, absolutely. But staying in his presence to carry that tangible relationship with the Lord so you can carry it out of the most holy place into the highways and byways to when you show up and you say, Holy Spirit, come. It's because he sent you in there to release it unto the people. And it creates controversy, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She dealt with a lot of that. Nobody could deny the fruit, could they? Well, you know, that's what happens when you see the Holy Spirit move and you have questions about that, which some did. And, you know, this was before Toronto. Before 1994, right. the Toronto blessing, yeah. when the outpouring happened. And then out of that, there was great controversy. But I read a book out of the Toronto outpouring that was like 10 or 20 years later. I can't remember all the ministries that were birthed around the world out of the Toronto outpouring right. with John or not, Carol or not, you know. Yes. The, and so that when the Holy Spirit fell in 1994 at the Toronto outpouring at the airport vineyard, it actually fell in 450 churches in North America on the exact same day. That's just one that people knew about. Yes. And there were the same types of manifestations everywhere, but the deliverance from sin. In fact, Heidi Baker was at the Toronto yes. outpouring, and that's where she got hammered by the Lord for three days and now she and her husband Roland and we had the privilege of being with Heidi a couple years ago they planted I don't know maybe 10,000 churches and they feed oh, yeah. 43,600 people a day with they don't have food yes through iris ministries huge. so this is the long-term power and fruit when God shows up with the glory I want you to pray a second prayer for a release okay. of the glory Okay. I want the people to receive because now that you know, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, uh, two five, Second Chronicles chapter five verse thirteen and fourteen in the Old Testament, the Shekinah glory of God, the glory of God shows up on the Transfiguration Mount. It shows up through Peter, shouted through Paul's handkerchiefs and aprons, and he shows up today through people that love the Lord Jesus Christ, exalt Him and spend time in the presence of the Holy Spirit and they carry that tangibility out from the secret place into the highways and byways. Pray that that's released. So just know, Jill always said, the Lord responds to hunger and desperation. And when you get to the point where you are sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired that you will do something about it, that's when you are going to have things happening to you. But she would always say, are you hungry? She said that she prayed more than anything for hunger. And I went, hunger? Wow, I never thought of that. But are you hungry? And are you desperate? Because if you are, then you'll take it. If you're not hungry, you don't eat. So I release mm, the glory and the presence of the Holy Spirit to come and to touch people's lives with supernatural intervention that the glory of the Lord, the fire of your, His presence will be surrounding you and that God will fill you with His Spirit, anoint you, but then you give it away. And when you give it away, you get more. And if you keep it to yourself, that pretty much ends it. It's an ever-expanding kingdom. That's oh, right. absolutely. Well, we thank God for this time with Linda Valen in Kansas City. And the website is jillaustinlegacy.com. Yes. Okay, so connect with Linda Valen, our good friend. We've known each other 16 years. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Love